Yo, what's up everyone and welcome back to another one of my videos here. Today we are going to be going over the replay buffer in OBS Studio. Now the replay buffer is something you can use to get clips of your recordings and live streams similar to NVIDIA's Shadowplay or AMD's Relive, except this uses your RAM to store the clips instead of writing and rewriting to your, um, to your drive, which could be bad for solid state drives, which have usually limited writes and rewrites. Uh, I don't know if newer drives do, but some of the older solid state drives, uh, NVIDIA Shadowplay will lower the life limit of it. So using your RAM as opposed to your uh, writing to your drive is better overall, or can be. But uh, the main reason I wanted to go over the replay buffer today was actually because it's helped myself immensely in my workflow lately. So uh, what I used to do is during my streams, uh, I would, if nobody, none of my chat took a clip or whatever, I would at the end go through my Twitch VODs and you know, you got to scroll through, watch, skip through hours of videos to try and get those clips and you only have your 60 day window before your VODs get deleted. So you have to force yourself to have time in there. Or um, what I also tried doing was recording my gameplay at the same time as streaming. And then I was just going through my recordings, but I found that as I didn't have time to uh, go through these recordings, uh, they were starting to build up on my hard drive. So what the replay buffer does is it allows you to just with the stroke of a key it will save x amount of your last seconds as a video clip on your computer and then you can clip and do editing from there instead of scouring through whole video files and i'm also going to show you how to quickly uh, trim and mash clips together right in windows 10 without having any additional software needed so that you can speed up your workflow and hopefully get those banger videos out there and those clips and highlight reels so let's get started Okay, so here we are in OBS Studio, and the first thing that we're going to do is en enable the replay buffer. So to do that, you need to go into your settings here, go to the output tab. Um, you wanna set the, go to recording here, first of all. You wanna set the output mode to advanced up here. Uh, you set your recording path here. I just have it on standard. You can set it to custom, but standard works just fine. Uh, MKV is the format that I use, and you select which one you have your audio track to and make sure that you have your um, audio from your game sounds in your clips as well. For me personally, I have uh, Spotify going to the second audio track, so without that checked, my Spotify won't show up on my videos, which we don't want. Um, so yeah, set the recording path to wherever you want your clips to be saved. And then, um, the recording format, you can use MP4, but if you use multiple audio tracks, you can use MP4, but, uh, I would recommend using MKV, but I wouldn't recommend it. OBS is built in Remux function. You should look into, uh, FFmpeg for remuxing but I just have an MKV. It does save an MP4 and an MKV. I haven't had any issues yet, but just in case. Now uh, for here, we do not want to set the rescale output here. That can mess your settings up. So just leave that blank right there. Uh, again, do not touch that. And then down here now for rate control, we have CBR, CQP, VBR, and lossless. I would set this to CQB and set it to 20 or 21. Uh, lower is better quality. It results in a large file size, but superb quality. So um, the other options here, what uh, VBR does, VBR is variable bit rate. So it chooses it based on an average bit rate and a max bit, bit sorry, a max bit rate. Uh, there's decent quality, but you can have inconsistent file sizes. Uh, CBR is a constant bitrate, which uses a uh, user set bitrate to encode with. 
there's good quality and it allows for you to control the file size but at the cost of quality. Now CQP is constant quantization parameter so it chooses a variable bitrate based on the QP and content being recorded. It is much faster and higher quality than VBR. And for lossless, you have no rate control, meaning there's very little compression, but there is a massive file size, but there is no quality loss from the source. But CQP should be just fine, and you set your level to 20 or 21. 20 will be better quality. Now for the uh, preset here, you should either set it to max quality or low latency quality, whichever gives you the best results. Uh, the profile, you want it to be high, um, but if you have issues, use main. High decodes better, but the encoding can be worse sometimes. Uh, GPU should always be zero unless you have a spare GPU, but even then, it's typically not worth doing. Um, the reason for this is because... Uh, Unless you have um, an SLI or Crossfire, you'd have to transfer the B frames for encoding from one GPU across the PCI lanes to the CPU and then back to the other GPU. So any processing power here would be lost due to transfer time. So it is honestly best to just leave that at zero. Now max B frames, leave that on two. You generally shouldn't touch this unless you really know what you're doing. Now. On the audio tab here, you can leave everything set to 160 for the bitrate. And then we will go to the replay buffer tab here. So make sure you have enabled the replay buffer here. Uh, click the checkbox. So here you can set how long your replay buffer will be. So I have it set to 120 seconds. So when I hit the key that I have for this, it will save the last two minutes of my recording or my clip in a video file. You can do 60, 120, 180, whatever works best for you. So far for me, 120 has worked the best and then just uh, clipping them afterwards. Um, you don't really want anything outside of 30 seconds to four minutes because anything longer than four minutes, you're better off just using a normal recording. Now, you can set the max memory from one gig to, or 512, I guess, up to four gigs, depending on how long the buffer is and your rate control. 512 works for me. I haven't had any issues at all. Now, we are going to go to, um, this audio tab here. So in your audio tab, there's very little that we actually have to configure here. What I would recommend is you, sh you should set the sample rate to 44.1 kilohertz unless all of your other devices are 48. If they're not all 48, set that to 44.1 and then everything else in here is fine as is, you can just set your uh, microphone and your item or your default inputs and in audio there. So now we will go to the video tab. So uh, as you can see here, even when I stream, I have my stream output to 936p, it rescales to, but uh, my video and my clips all base and output are 1080p, so that shouldn't be affected there. Um, your base canvas resolution should be set to your native resolution, and so should your output. These should be what your native resolution is on your device. The downscale filter can be anything since we aren't descaling, but for performance reasons, you should set it to bicubic. FPS, you can leave on 60. Now, uh, another thing in here for in your general section. So when you're using the replay buffer, when you start streaming, you also need to hit start replay buffer down here or after you record. Um, what I would recommend that has always helped for me is, um, where is it? 
Okay, yeah. Sorry, here, um, in the, so in general here in the output section, I would recommend checking automatically start replay buffer when streaming so that uh, in case you forget to manually start it, anytime you start streaming, this will automatically start the replay buffer as well. So that's how we set up the replay buffer and have it automatically start when streaming. Uh, another thing I do is in my hotkeys here, I've got my replay buffer set to F12. So every time I hit my F12 key, that's what saves the two minute clip into my uh, designated folder. And you can also bind this key then to a stream deck as well. So you can use your stream deck to grab clips. And that way, uh, I know when I have a clip, I just hit F12 and it'll save the last two minutes. And then I can go in and trim it down and do some editing, which I will show you how to do now. So once you have your, um, once you have your clips saved, so mine gets saved to this OBS recordings folder. And what I want to show you is how you can uh, trim them down without having any additional software. So in here, if I wanted to, I've got this video. It saved my last two minutes here, as you can see, but I really only wanted, I really only wanted, uh, to showcase this STG build. So as you can see, I just wanted to clip the end. So the best way to do that is go to your video and open it with photos in Windows. If you open it with photos, I know it's a video, um, but same team, bro. Once that's in once that's opened in photos, you can go up here to edit and create, and then you can add your slow-mo here as well as add text and stuff. But for today's tutorial, we are just going to trim. So we can see, and it tells you how much total it is. So I wanted it from this part, and then we want down and down and let's say we wanted to stop there so we drag this and we've got eight seconds um let's just go yeah eight seconds and then what we would do is we'll just make sure this is right view our clip here one down two downs and that's all we want for the clip so you can just save as and then save it as um trim example save it as whatever you want to call it and now let's say that you wanted to actually put a quick few of your clips together that you've trimmed uh, you can again open up photos app and then uh, in your photos app you can add your collection or add a folder so i've in here i'll add my folder of my obs or, or to pictures but you can go to video editor and you can do a new project video so let's go like this new project video um demo okay so for my project library let's say i want to add from my pc we can add so you can add your OBS recordings folder. Uh, I've trimmed some examples here in my downloads for this purpose of this video. So we will open up our downloads folder and we will open up, let's say, um, trim example and let's, this one and this one are trimmed or let's go with that. So we'll open up all three of these files here now in fo photos. Uh, then you can just simply drag and drop them, order which clips you want where, add your uh, 3D effects and everything, and if you want to change the speed, you can change the background music and custom audio. And again, this is in the Photos app that comes with Windows 10. And then when you're done, you just hit Finish Video. We want this in 1080p, and we'll use Hardware Accelerating, so we'll export and uh, demo video, export, and 
just like this, we can uh, quickly get clips for TikTok and edits. And here is our whole video now. So there's the one clip. And then I use the same clip multiple times. And then here's another clip. And then there's the third one together. So, so there is uh, a quick way for you to get high quality clips from your streaming without having to go back and filter through hours of content and try to find clips. You can just trim them quick and easy like that right in your uh, Microsoft Windows 10 using the Photos application. So good luck with your content creation and let me know if you have any other tips or tricks that you want to see me uh, do videos on. Uh, like and subscribe if you want. That would be greatly appreciated. It helps me create this content to help others. And uh, go ahead, get some clips and feel free to share them below and let's see what you guys come up with. Peace.